Loretta LaTonta. Jimmy House. North Jersey 1500. 835 Wednesday morning on WGHT. Jimmy House and Greta Latona. You know the music. You own the music. You love the music. You love the man. Tommy James. Tommy James and the Shundells. 23 gold singles. Nine platinum albums. 100 million records worldwide. Books. Appearances. Coming to New Jersey April 25th. Joining us now on the morning show. Hiya, Tommy. How are you? All right. Thanks for joining us again. It's, uh, I think it's our fourth time you're with us, and I really appreciate sure. you getting up because uh, <laughs> I, I know you have a busy schedule, and we, and we were talking with, I think it was Carol, and she, and she got us uh, to get you live. Sure. Instead well, of, listen, it's my pleasure. Tommy, I saw something really exciting before, before we talk about your appearance uh, a week from Saturday. You're going to be, uh, or they're going to use a song on the Goldbergs, the TV show. That's one of the hottest shows in the country right now. Right. Well, we have been, uh, uh, you know, we've been so lucky. We have a new deal that we put together with Sony Music uh, for uh, uh, licensing our, our songs to uh, movies and television, commercials, all kinds. Of, and they've just done an incredible job over the last year or so. And I have been, uh, I, my hat's off to them. They uh, have gotten us, this is sort of inside stuff, but they have been really terrific. I'm, I'm flabbergasted because you are still touring and you are not as old as people think you are. You I'm 106. Are, you just made it I'm very young. You made it very young. That's what the deal is. <laughs> well, I, I did. I actually, uh, when we, uh, uh, in 1966, when our, our Hanky Panky hit, I was uh, 18 years old, yeah. just turning 19. And so, uh, yeah, we, you know, started young, but I, who in the world thought we'd be doing this 50 years later? I, I'm quite amazed and really feel very blessed. So the last time you were at the Mayo Pack Center, uh, Greta and I saw the show, and you were very gracious to us backstage. Thank you for that. We didn't get a chance to thank you for that. But the show that you put on is absolutely unbelievable. If you think the records are good, you have to hear Tommy live. To oh, hear, well, thank you so much. That's really nice of you to say. And you, and you don't go, uh, it's not uh, one of these low-budget shows. You go all out. You really put the time in it. <laughs> And the, the light show and the sound is phenomenal. Your voice is still there. You are one of the top performers I've ever seen as an oldies act. And well, you're not thank really you. an oldies act. I appreciate act. that very much. And, and we're not just saying that. How, how's your book, Me, the Mob, and the Music going? You know, it's going to be a movie now. And uh, uh, it's, the screenplay is being written as we speak by Matthew Stone. And the movie is going to be produced by Barbara Dufina, who produced Goodfellas and uh, uh, Casino yep. and uh, Hugo a couple of years ago with Martin Scorsese and just a whole string of really great films. And we're so proud that she's going to do our, do our movie. And uh, it's amazing to me. And after the movie, they want to do a Broadway show. The next couple of years are going to be really interesting. And I am blown away by all this. The book, Me, the Mob, and the Music, not only is it riveting, it's an inside behind the scenes of Roulette Records back in the day. And if Roulette Records was like other record labels, that's really a tell-all book about the music industry. In of the really 1960s. Well, certainly. The, uh, well, of course, the, the, it's an autobiography with the gist of the story being this very dark and sinister story going on behind us that we couldn't talk about. And that Absolutely. was because uh, Roulette Records, in addition to being a functioning record company, and a good independent label, by the way, but they were also a front for the Genovese crime family in New York. Yeah. And, uh, of course, that made life really interesting for us. Uh, you know, there was some really uh, scary, scary times up there. We didn't have a chance to talk about that until... Uh, we felt it was okay when we first started the story, started the book, Martin Fitzpatrick, my co-author, and I. We were going to call it Crimson and Clover, and we were going to, you know, write about the hits and making music and all that. But we got about a third of the way into it and realized that if we don't tell the whole story, meaning the roulette story, which really is the story, we were cheating ourselves and everybody else. But I was very 
nervous about finishing it because some of these guys were still walking around. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to end up like Curtis Sliwa with, <laughs> no. you know, with a slug in your gut, you know? Oh, no, that's a fact. You know? So anyway, that was we, we, when, when the, the roulette regulars, as we called them, finally the last of them passed on, we felt like we could go ahead and finish the thing, and that's what we did. So, Tommy, tell us about your YouTube venture. Sure. Well, uh, the YouTube people came to, came to us and asked us, uh, it was about a year ago, asked us if we would be interested in doing a, uh, uh, a YouTube show, meaning it's sort of like a mini TV show on YouTube that uh, happens on a regular basis. And uh, because our catalog was pretty deep and, and we had a lot of music, and so we said, sure. So we started a, a little show on YouTube called Inside Tracks. And um, we're going to be, uh, you know, taking people into the studio and we're talking about the hits as well as the new stuff that we're doing as well. So, because uh, we're starting a new album next month. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called Acoustatronics. <laughs> and it's uh, basically an acoustic album using acoustic instruments, but it's going to be pretty hard edged. It's not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be Michael Road to Boat Shore with acoustic guitars. Uh, for example, we're using acoustic instruments in place of electric instruments. But are, we're going are to you be, covering your own stuff, or we do? Yeah, anything? it's going to be mostly. It's going to be. I'm going to do a couple of the uh, of the original hits. Uh, for example, the new version of "I Think We're Alone" now is going to be used in the movie Great. that we're doing on the album. And uh, we'll probably do, uh, I'd like to do a new, a new version of Crystal Blue Persuasion. And then the rest of them will be uh, new songs. So uh, that's going to be scheduled for later on this year. We, we're starting it next month, and we will have it out uh, by year's end. And uh, so that's going to be a big deal for us. Besides the Goldbergs, your music's been heard in 27 motion pictures, uh, Breaking Bad, Criminal Minds, The Simpsons, and uh, Nissan used it, used Moni Moni, not yeah, too long ago. Uh, well, you know, we've, we've, we've been very fortunate that uh, the music has... Uh, I think the greatest compliment they can give you, honestly, is, is to have your, your music sort of become part of the landscape. Tommy, yeah. who, who, who's the most famous person you ever met? The most famous person I ever met? Wow. Yeah, one that blows you away, that you were like... Because well, I was fascinated by uh, Hubert Humphrey, who was, you know, Hubert Humphrey was the vice president running for president right. in 1968, and we did the entire campaign with him. And we would bring in the youth vote and so forth, and uh, uh, that was, uh, it was a big, big deal. He ended up writing the liner notes for the Crimson and Clover album. Right. And uh, I, I suppose being on that presidential campaign and all the people that we met uh you know, we met the president, we met uh, uh, President Johnson, and we met, uh, oh God, all the people that were associated with Hubert, and, and uh, it was really was, an amazing was, moment to be in the center of your, it was like being in the eye of a storm, you know. Was being in the president, uh, presence of President Johnson, like people say it is, he, he was this huge, big man that everyone, when, yeah. when he walked in the room, everybody yes. stood at attention because... He, he, he was a big guy. He was, and, uh, uh, you know, commanded the room. There's no doubt about it. We, we had also met, of course, Robert Kennedy earlier that year, and we were, uh, it, was a, it was a big, big deal, 1968, the presidential uh, election of 68. And, uh, of course, everything that was going on, it was just a very tumultuous moment. That's, an, that's another book. It is, and it's, it was uh, a fascinating time. And I felt so good to be in the center of all that because, uh, I mean, you really, you really know, you really see what's going on. Right. And uh, so I was uh, really impressed by that moment, that whole, the whole scene. Thanks for sharing that. That is, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing question. When you ask a famous person, which you are, uh, who they met, who they were impressed yeah. by, you, you have to hear some of the answers, but yours is the best one I've heard. That's really, that's... <laughs> well, that's, that's true, too. Now, that took eight, eight months or a year out of your life doing that? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We, uh, well, we started out actually uh, uh, in April of that year, but we didn't, of course, the campaign didn't get kicked off till after the convention in August. But um, 
uh, that whole year, so we just seemed to be asked by a lot of people to be involved in politics. It was the first, the first time that a rock act had ever been involved with in presidential politics. Did it you never ca- happened before. Did you bring a camera with you? Do you have shots? With lots of cameras, yes. I'd like to see and, that. Uh, but, um, you know, to be sitting right there in, on the platform next to uh, Hubert Humphrey and his wife as he's given the speech, it had, that, none of that stuff had ever happened before. That's amazing. And, and can I, I want to ask you a musical question, too, and then we'll talk about your show one more time, and then we'll, we'll send you on your way. I know you're busy. Tommy, who taught you how to play the guitar? Because I notice, and I, you play, your guitar is e-tuned. Yes. My guitar, I know, but I, I taught myself, unfortunately. No, no, you play great. Well, thank you. I uh, I play to an open E tuning, which I really I just started because I wasn't really interested in playing the lead. Right. I just wanted to accompany my vocals, and so gradually, uh, you know, I started playing lead along with with rhythm. But I, you know, the point was I couldn't learn anything from anybody because nobody played like I did. Right. And I couldn't teach anything to anybody because nobody played like I did. So. Uh, uh, you know, it was just, it's like, sort of like speaking your own language. Absolutely. I just, uh, but I love playing that way because it's great to write with a lot of suspended chords and a lot of, uh, you know, it's just a, a different way of tuning. Yeah, when I, when I saw you playing, I was, I, I watch, I was watching your hands and I you said, you play guitar? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I was saying, what, what is he doing? Because the guy, on, <laughs> yes. the guy that stands on your right, your lead guitarist, he, you know, right. he, he plays it straight and I'm saying, what is he, is he plugged in? And then you were, I heard you playing and I was saying, wait a minute, he's e-tuned. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, how, that's how true. You? And it's, uh. Uh, well, it just seemed logical to me at the time. And yeah. I just, uh, it was a fast way to learn, so that's what I did. I play that way to this day. That, it's amazing that you can play an A. <laughs> or a minor. Or an a, you're right. It's, or diminished. Or yeah. seventh. I'm like, man. Oh, gosh. All right, Tommy, thanks for answering that question, too. Uh, my pleasure. All right, you're appearing right down the street from us, right? Right, you know, yeah. you're 20 minutes from the radio station. It's the Mayo <laughs> Pack Center. The best place to see Tommy James. Well, thank you. We're really excited about this. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I live in Jersey, and I, I don't get to play Jersey all that much, strangely enough. We're, we're out on the road all over the country. But um, honestly, uh, uh, playing Jersey is very special because it's my stomping grounds, and uh, it's close by where I live, so, I, so you better be good. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then um, uh, just the fact that the, the crowds are so great. The crowds are good and rowdy. They know how to rock. and, and They sing uh, along, too. And they're very loyal. You could say that again. Yeah. What a bass you have. So we're really thrilled to come by. We're going to be playing a couple dates in Jersey this year, but the, the first one is going to be at the Mayo. And we're really excited about that. It's going to be fun. Great. You spent time in uh, Morristown when you were a kid? You know, uh, my drummer, Pete Lucy, li- uh, grew up in Morristown. Yeah. And Pete and I were best friends. And Pete passed away, uh, well, quite some time ago. Right. But uh, we were best friends. And so I'd, sp- I'd spend a lot of time in Morristown. We'd go over to his folks' house, and, and we'd uh, write there, and we'd uh, practice all through the 60s and 70s, actually. No, I'd spend a lot of time in Morristown. All right, Tommy James, you have a personal website, too, where... Uh People can catch up with you and, and sure. re- maybe send you an email. Can you Absolutely. plug your website? Absolutely, TommyJames.com. And you can see where we're working and uh, what we're up to. And We're going to look, we're, we're, we're going to be at the show uh, on April 25th. You can By the way, Felix Cavalier is going to be with me. No way. Yeah, Felix is opening the show and he's great. Are you kidding me? I am not kidding. That's a tough act to follow, man. <laughs> well, listen, Felix is good. Felix and I yeah, are friends forever. Are you sure you're going to do that? We had Eddie on the show yeah. a couple of uh, months ago. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, we were talking about their tour that they, they recently did. But uh, sure. Felix and you, what a show that's going to be. That's going to be fun. It really, really is. <laughs> I'm psyched. You can still get your tickets. Mayo Pack Center, you can Google them. There's a website, Ticketmaster. Go to Tommy James's website. Tommy James, it's an honor and a privilege. Great to talk with you. Don't be a stranger. Peace out, man. You take care of yourself. The great Tommy James on WGHT Radio.